What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over different weapon types. So we can have single fire weapons, burst weapons, and automatic weapons. They should be pretty self-explanatory what they are if you're familiar with them, but we do have to cover them, and we do have to kind of go over some of the changes that this requires. We started the series with the basic first-person shooter template and we had to change a bunch of stuff to make it fit how we wanted to. Now we're finally at the point where I think we can start making changes again, adjustments that are completely new. Uh, what we're gonna do today to get started is, it's gonna be a pretty simple episode. You'll just need some prior knowledge about how we've made our system so far. So if you wanna check out the first episode of this series or the entire playlist and get caught up, I'll leave the link to the iCard right here in the top right corner. Otherwise, we're just going to add a few things to the code, tweak the weapons themselves and the blueprint a little bit, and we should get the functionality that we want. So, in our code, we have the first-person shooter tutorial character, or basically your base character. Now, in here, we have this function called onFire, if you scroll down. On fire is what gets used to fire projectiles, and there was a lot in here at first. In fact, there was a ton in here that we didn't have to do. Most of it was done by the uh, the template. It was already in here from the template. And so we took a lot of it out in previous episodes, and we had all this extra stuff. I have these comments down below. We had all this code in here as well in this function. And usually I just take them out and take note of it and tell you guys, but this is a lot. So you can remove all these lines you see if you've been following the tutorial directly or if you're just using the template and clicking into this episode. I don't need any of this stuff. Feel free to keep it if you would like it. It is not necessary for what we have anymore to do any of this. So I wanted to clean this out. I'm going to delete it to get rid of it. But I want to show you guys, you can pause the video if you want, take a look at those lines, and see what I've gotten rid of. Now, getting rid of that also makes our on-fire function much easier to read. As you can tell, we now can put it on the screen without, like, having to scroll up and down to read it. So this is the new on-fire function. I'm going to cover it in depth because we did talk about it before, but again, there were a lot of elements there that we did not write. So now we can go over it. This is basically our own custom function. Everything here is ours except for the fire sound effect, which we will end up changing eventually. But for now, since we're not at that point, I've left it in so we can still have sounds on our weapons. All right, so in on-fire, I basically check if the character or the player is choosing to shoot right now or not and is shooting is determined by basically when we press the button we want to shoot we call start firing we set is shooting to true and we call this function on fire when we stop firing that's when we release the shoot button then we set is shooting to false and we invalidate the timer handle invalidating the handle essentially just means that it's going to stop this from the operation that it's doing and clean it up all right so we call on fire when we press our shoot button. We check if we are shooting. This is important because, yes, we're obviously shooting if this gets called from the start firing function. We just said it to be true. However, we only want to shoot if the player wants to be shooting. And so in, in a single fire weapon, we call start firing by pressing is shooting or, we, or by pressing the button to shoot. And so this will always fire at least once. But in the case of automatic weapons, and we'll get to this in a second, it's going to recall this function and try and shoot again. So if the player's released the shoot button before this function gets called again, before the fire rate allows it to be called again, then we want to make sure that we don't shoot. So this is shooting is basically, is the player pressing the button to shoot? Doesn't matter what type of weapon it is or what weapon mode we're on. All right. <clears throat> then this if weapons that is valid index weapon index weapons is our weapons array that we made earlier in the series and essentially it will hold all the weapons that our player holds we build it to support either many many weapons like uh, if you're playing doom or that that type of game where you can just hold all the weapons we've also built it to just support two weapons so if you just want to have like uh, Halo, Apex Legends style, where you have two weapons and you switch between them. So either way, doesn't really matter, but I make sure that we have a valid index of the current weapon index that we swap to. Again, this is all covered in other parts of the series. 
But basically, we want to make sure our weapon is valid and that the player is trying to shoot. Then, we want to make sure that we have ammo in our weapon, else trying to shoot will reload our weapon. Alright. Alright. And then, here's where we start to get into some new stuff today. So, we did have this timer handle here before, but you'll notice a few different things about it. So, before, we were calling fire weapon, which was a blueprint event. Now that we want to cover potentially different modes of fire, like single fire, uh, burst fire, and automatic fire, we have to change the logic per the weapon that we want to be firing. And this is important because if you actually try this with what you have now or what you had in the past, if you were to sh cl keep clicking the button, keep shooting single fire, it would be faster than your automatic fire. Now that might be intended, uh, you know, some games do reward you for continuously pressing uh, like, for example, a good example I can think of is Gears of War. The hammer bursts, in, in particular, actually fires quicker, more quickly, if you keep pressing the shoot the trigger button, the shoot button, as opposed to if you just hold it. So it does allow for both forms of fire. In this case, to not complicate things, I'm going to separate them completely. If we want to add them together later at different fire rates, we can. But that wasn't really my intention initially, so that was a bit of a bug. Um, just because we didn't have different fire rates. But now that we're adding them, we can separate them and choose what weapons can do single fire, what can do burst, what can do automatic. So we're going to start with that. We can always make it more complex later and add different fire patterns and ramp up times and different things like that. So let's go in. Let, let's see this new fire function that I made. This before would be weapons, weapon index dot er, uh, arrow, fire weapon. Okay. But in the base weapon.h class, this is our base weapon. Again, made this a long time ago in the series. And we had this weapon type, which had assault rifle, pistol, and submachine gun. Well, now I've made a new enum called e weapon mode, and I have single, burst, and auto. Now, burst is going to be a little bit weird here. We're most likely going to do a different episode on burst. That way, we can have, you know, maybe two, like two bullet burst, three bullet burst, whatever or also just being able to change the burst functionality. Burst is the hardest out of all this because single and auto are actually pretty simple with what we already have. With burst, we do need to get into some of that fire pattern stuff or the fire graphs, however we want to handle it. And so we will kind of, we'll put it in now, but it will need to be adjusted to be made proper in the future. So basically make this enum, add all the weapon types you want, I think these three are probably good. Again, for burst, you can have like two two bullet bursts, three bursts, whatever. But even for something like a melee weapon, you could actually just keep it single if you wanted, and it would work. Um, you know, it just basically this is going to determine what happens when we press our shoot button. If it's single, we're going to have to continuously uh, press release, press release, press release the button. Uh, if it's burst, you know, maybe it's automatic, but you have to. You have to hold it, and it will burst, stop, burst, stop, or, and probably how we're going to set it up, as you press, release, press, release, press, release, like the single fire, however, it shoots like three bullets at a time, something like that. For the automatic, you can press it just once, and it'll just keep shooting until you release the button. Of course, when we make an enum, we need a variable to go along with it, so we can actually set that value for that class. So, um... Like we have the e-weapon type, I have an e-weapon mode, which I've called weapon mode. Make sure it's all the blueprint stuff, that way we can edit it and set it for each uh, weapon BP that we have. Okay. Uh, you don't have to set a default technically, I do in this case. So I set weapon mode equal to e-weapon mode single. I think single fire is definitely the default, that's why I put it up... Uh, first in the enum list and then back in the base weapon.h we also need to add a function here so we had this fire weapon function this already existed and we were calling that in on fire but i want to change this i want the weapon itself to determine what happens when it fires we don't really want to 
have the on fire function in the character determine what the weapon does. That's a little bit weird. So we do want to call a function that sets the, the fire logic for the weapon. And then we do want to call fire weapon. But I've added a new function. That way we can kind of route this the proper way. That way it makes it easier for us to change these features for each weapon. So fire weapon is still the blueprint implementable event. It's the one that spawns the projectile in the blueprint and all that good stuff. However, I've also added this function, and I've called I've called it just void fire, and the u it's just uh, u function blueprint callable. Implementable event remember means that you don't fill out the logic in the code, you call it in the code, and then you fill out the logic in the blueprint. We want to fill out this logic in the code, so make this one blueprint callable. Then go back to base weapon CPP and create this function. And all this stuff above is stuff we already had. It's just this function that we're worrying about right now. So we have a base weapon fire. And I just did a switch on the weapon mode. For those that aren't familiar, we have done it a few times throughout this series and other series. But a switch statement essentially will go through every option that you give it. So in an enum, we have three options. You can actually have a default case as well. However, uh, we don't have like a default enum state in this case. So it's automatically going to fall under one of these. But basically the point is you can give it all these different cases or all these different essentially if else's. If it's this, if it's equal to this, if it's equal to this, else if it's equal to this. You know what I mean? And so if it's if the weapon mode, if this variable is equal to any of these cases. So if the weapon mode is equal to E weapon mode single, E weapon mode burst, or E weapon mode auto, it will perform the corresponding logic. Now, for all these, I've basically done the same logic for now. They are definitely going to be adjusted in the future, especially the burst. However, I have differentiated the burst a little bit now just so you can also see what's going on. So basically, for the single case, we fire the weapon, we take one ammo away, and we break. This is actually probably going to stay how it is for the most part because, again, single firing is very easy. You press the button, you fire the weapon, and then it, nothing happens until you release the button and press it again. Now, burst will be more complicated. But just as an example to show you that things are working, I've called fire weapon, and then I've taken three from the ammo. Just to say, just to show that it's a little bit different if we assign this to a weapon. Then for auto, I call fire weapon and subtract one from the clip. And this is actually good for now as well. Again, if we want like ramp up times and these different firing patterns for recoil and different things like that, it's going to get a little bit hairy. It won't be exactly the same as the single is like it is now. But this is good enough for now because we're going to determine the firing logic for automatic weapons in the on fire event. So once you have this in, we can go back to our FPS tutorial character. And now instead of calling fire weapon where you were, make sure you call weapons weapon index fire instead. Notice that we are calling fire weapon within this function no matter what path we go down. So fire weapon is still getting called here, but we're doing extra logic now. And that's what we want. And then the other thing we were doing at this point was we were we had this line in here. Technically, this Boolean was false. I'll explain what that is in a second. But we had this timer in here. It should say like world get timer manager dot set timer. I've taken out the world the um, if world if statement. And my reasoning for that is this. The world is essentially you can think of it as what it sounds like. It's basically if your your level has loaded and if things are existing in it, different things like that. So if the world is invalid at this point, we will have bigger issues um, than just setting this timer. In fact, these things should not be valid if the world is not valid. Now, with level streaming and different things like this, you know, there can be issues. So we'll have to watch out for them and we'll update it as necessary. But for now, I wanted to trim this function down so we can see exactly what we're working with. And if we run into trouble down the line, we will fix it. It's a simple if statement, so it's not hard. But make sure you add get world as opposed to just using the, the world variable here since that no longer exists in this function. 
And then let's go through what this timer is again, and then I'll talk about the if statement that it is now surrounded in. Okay, so for this timer, what was happening is we had this timer handle, which is something we made in another episode, but just to remind you, fire timer handle is just this. It basically just keeps track of time and you can start and stop this timer. That's essentially all it is. It's nothing you really have to know more about for this operation specifically, but we do need to have a timer handle when you look at set timer, which we can't actually do because I'm running currently, but when you look at it, this is you need an in handle or an in timer that it will uh, perform this action on. So we have our timer handle. This is the object to run this timer on, which we want it to be the character. And then we have to call a function when the timer is up. We're recalling the on fire function. This is because we are checking to see, let's go to the if statement, if the weapon at this index, its weapon mode is auto. If it is auto, we want to do this logic. If it's not auto, we don't do we don't set this timer. This timer is going to be recalling this function once the time runs out. So basically, to make an automatic weapon, you shoot once you pull the trigger, and then it has a fire rate. So once that fire rate keeps running out, then it keeps shooting as long as as long as is shooting doesn't go to false, as long as the button has not been released. So now if we look at this, we're calling the function that we're in. This is the rate at which you want to call it. This is how much the timer has. So we have the weapon's fire rate. So changing the fire rate will change how quickly bullets come out of this weapon. Now the last variable here is, it was false in the previous episode, it's true now. What this actually is, is it's a boolean to determine if this is a looping timer. And so in this case, it is a looping timer. It's a timer that's going to uh, call itself, essentially, call the function that it's in and keep calling it. It's supposed to help with, um, you know, resetting the timer if it's not meant to be reset. So if you reach this somehow without uh, letting the timer run out. So I guess, for example, if you were to set the timer and then start firing again, like just release and press really quickly, go back into this function, set this timer. It's supposed to stop it from being reset. In my honest opinion, I have not really seen it do that under a lot of circumstances anyway, like under the standard circumstances. So I don't really think that, I, I'm not sure if this is necessary. I was not able to see a difference, but technically it should be set to true based on the information we're given. So I'm changing it now. All right, and those are all the code changes we need. So this is a, this is this shouldn't be too bad of an episode. All we have to do now is adjust our weapons to be the correct type and test it out. So if we go back into our Unreal project and we go to where our weapons are, we have a few weapons. For me, I have the base weapon BP, which is essentially my pistol. I know it's more of like a rifle, but I, I treat this as my pistol. I call it the blaster, and I set the weapon mode to single fire. This is important. So when you go into all of your, your weapons, base weapon BP, you know, assault rifle, whatever, click on class defaults, and you'll see, you should see all these as long as you compiled your Visual Studio. The weapon mode you want to choose. So for me, for the blaster, I want single fire, and we'll show that that is single fire in a second. Now, if we go to the assault rifle, I've set it to be burst fire. Remember, burst fire is a little bit weird at the moment, so don't worry about that too much. But you can set it now to test it out. And for the submachine gun, I've set it to be auto fire. And so if we test out these weapons, if I press the button, I shoot once, and I never shoot again, no matter how long I hold it. Then when I press it again, I shoot. And I can press and I can shoot fast. I don't have a cap on how fast I can shoot. And we may want to add that later. However, right now, this is working completely as intended. Now I can pick up another weapon. Let's say our assault rifle. Okay? This is actually our burst rifle. Now, in this case, I shoot once and I lose three ammo. Shoot once and I lose three ammo. 
and you can see the ammo on the bottom right. So I have 18, I shoot once, and I'm now down to 15. So you can see the burst rifle is working. I mean, we don't have the logic in. We could just fire, put a delay, fire, delay, fire, but really that's not exactly how we're going to handle it, so I didn't want to hack together stuff when we're going to have to adjust it in the future anyway. Um, again, I can sh technically shoot it as fast as I want. I can manually reload, or uh, we should apply the, the reload animation um, when we reload from shooting, but that's something we'll cover in the actual reloading episode and fixing up those animations. And then the blaster, if I shoot and hold, in fact, if I just press it, it starts shooting automatically. I get that it's offset a little bit. It's something we will have to adjust. But you can see that it's shooting bullets as I hold it at its fire rate. So if I were to change its fire rate, and go get the weapon, then you can see it shoots like nobody's business. Or I can also make it much slower. But it's still automatic. I can still shoot by holding the trigger. And so that's how you know our fire rate and our weapon types are actually working. And yeah, I think this is the default value. Something like that. But there you go. So now you can test out the values you want for each weapon just by changing them in the blueprint and the code should take care of the rest. We will get more into the burst weapons and we're going to start getting into some of the stuff for the animations because you can see the animation itself, the animations themselves are not too clean. Like for example, the animation looks good from the outside. For the person using the weapon, um, the person in first person view, we have this thing that's supposed to, you know, when you move, it moves the weapon up as part of the animation, but it just flat out does not look good. And we can fix all that actually. We can make minor adjustments to these animations themselves or to the logic that we have for who sees what animations. Because if you've noticed, when you're playing a game, you don't always see the animations that other people do. You might perform an animation, like for example, something I like is, we'll go back to Apex Legends. When you are running as different characters, they have all different run stances. Like some are holding their gun down below, like Wraith, or in one hand. And when you're looking at the character in first person view, they pretty much all hold the weapon the same way. And they don't match what the model looks like on the outside. So, yes, yeah, so this is a little bit ugly for us right now, right? The gun might be a little bit, it's covering the screen too much. It doesn't really shoot exactly where, so, some of them do. But, like, this shoots above the crosshairs. The submachine gun shot to the left of it. We can fix all that, sure. But as far as the animations go, there's also a way we can just make it look nicer by simply playing animations that look better for the character and playing animations that look better uh, while viewing the character. And so we're going to start getting into that stuff pretty soon. But I just wanted to make you all aware that there are things we can do for that, and I have plans for that. But for now... I figured we could enjoy some weapon modes because, you know, it is a first person shooter. So getting fun weapons out there is very important. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for me in the channel than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon members and YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you guys so, so much for this. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to get you sorted and fixed up for any of the problems you had or anything that I maybe did not explain as, as well as I could have. And that's all I got for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.